This used to be the village of Arahama on the outskirts of Sendai. Now it's quite literally the end of the road. Even the damage done by one of the strongest earthquakes in history is nothing compared to this total wipeout. That's what a tsunami does. Then came the warning. OK, and now we're being told there's another tsunami on the way. Everyone's being cleared out of the way and we've really got to run. And on Croydon's main high street at midnight, one of the most dangerous fires of all. Five doors down from a bookie's blazing out of control, locked behind this door, under the nose of police, a woman trapped. She'd been shouting for help for some time from a smoke-filled building. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah. Come out. I just heard lots of people um, scream. <laughs> Are, are your children upstairs, ma'am? Yeah? Do we need to get police? Can you add or shed any that, light to that? That's coming from um, Bin Laden's daughter, who's being debriefed by the Pakistanis right now. I think the important question is, and this touches on it, was this a kill or a capture mission? And uh, as I understand it from sources very senior, the kind of people who watched this operation go down live, um, there was a huge debate in the preceding weeks um, in the administration about whether this should be kill or capture. In the end, they did come down on the kill option. And just think about it, you know, they could have just uh, shot a gun guided missile at the compound and obliterated everyone. Mm. The reason, the main reason I'm given to understand that they didn't do that was simply because they wanted to be able to identify positively Osama bin Laden's body. What you got planned for tonight? A rat, a petrol bomb, all the cops. Petrol bomb? Yep. Kill them all. Kill them all? Standing on that corner right over there are convicted IRA terrorists trying to stop these kids causing trouble and they're just ignoring them. Villages like this are usually found in the world's trouble spots, looking after orphans of war and disaster. But this village is in Europe. Many of these children are here because their parents couldn't afford them. Will you miss the president? What will you miss about him? And to, for the president, what will you miss about Tony Blair? And what are you looking for in an eventual replacement? Mm. Uh, I'll miss those red ties is what I'll miss. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say one thing. He answered the question. Don't count him out. British and American armies are spread out across the northern Kuwaiti desert around me as far as the eye can see. A few minutes after that, gas, 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 the words we've all heard so often in drills. This time it was for real. They've taken all the money they could out of the bank now, but there's one vault left that they couldn't get into. The troops just hoping if they couldn't, no one else can. Houston Astrodome where 30,000 refugees are at last safe, are at last being fed and watered. I'll be showing you how they're now beginning the desperate search for the loved ones they lost during the scramble to escape New Orleans. We've got a family reunion too. The thing that hits you right between the eyes here in northeastern Japan is that in spite of the earthquake, in spite of the tsunami and in spite of the threat of total nuclear meltdown now, uh, people here, yes they are, they're traumatized. Yes, of course, they are extremely anxious and frightened, but they are so calm, so collected, so patient and so polite. We have seen today, driving uh, through the area, just 60 miles from, uh, from the Fukushima power plant that's, that's basically failing now, we've seen women and children dressed in masks and covered head to foot, waiting patiently in what could be radioactive rain, and they're waiting for food. Cordelia, people now being forcibly removed. Yeah, we saw one mandatory evacuation firsthand today. Basically, police and troops here have been given a mission, an enormous mission, to get every last person out of this city so it, be, it can be cleaned up and made safe to live in again. The problem is, as you'll all understand by now, that some people are determined to stay. We went out on patrol today with some local police. They're called state troopers here. And we saw firsthand exactly how violent some people's reaction to these mandatory evacuations is. 
The US, France and China are laying on planes to get anyone who wants to leave out of Japan altogether. Not so simple, though, the situation for the British people stuck here. I called the British Embassy um, over here just earlier to get a recorded message uh, telling me because of the crisis, lines were down. Now, the official advice from the Foreign Office is to leave Tokyo and northern Japan. There are, as you mentioned, two flights actually uh, uh, available with seats on for British people, one this evening, one tomorrow. Now, officially, if you can prove that you have been affected by the earthquake or the tsunami, then your flight home is free. If you are leaving, however, because you were afraid of the radiation, well, then you will have to pay. And the reason for that, the Foreign Office say there's no immediate risk to health. What there is a risk of, though, are further aftershocks, food, fuel and water shortages and rolling power cuts here.